Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about bringing home baby chicks. So this is the time of year everybody's doing it. Tractor Supply put out baby chicks this week. We got ours at Rural King uh, last week. And I'll have a shot of our initial brooding setup. Uh, we actually first brought them home and put them in our living room in just a plastic coat. But when you're, when you're bringing home chickens, you need to think about a few different things. One, you need to think about how much space you need for them. Uh, we knew where we were going to put them, but it wasn't quite ready yet. Uh, so uh, we had to clean this out today for the chicks. But uh, we did have a place to put them in our living room for the first week in a plastic container. But it wasn't big enough uh, to let them grow out in because we have 14 chicks. So um, the container can be, you can do a few different things for the container. Most people use either wood, plastic, or, um, or even cardboard boxes. Cardboard boxes would be fine depending on how many chicks you have, right? So uh, a, what I've got here is actually a piece of plywood and I've got them kind of put in a corner in a shed uh, that we're not using for anything else other than storage. So uh, the underneath the um, wood chips here, what I have is Underneath the wood chips, I have a, uh, I don't want to scare them, but I have a plastic shower curtain, uh, just so that when everything's done, I don't have to worry about stuff soaking through the wood chips and getting on our floor. And when everything's done in a few weeks, we can move these guys out to a coop. And, um, and as soon as we move them out to the coop, I can just drag this out and throw it on the compost pile. So, um, container, again, cardboard, wood, plastic, it doesn't matter as long as it's big enough. Um, you can even put them directly in the coop if you don't have any uh, other chickens in there that might bother them or, um, and as long as it's warm enough, right? So once you have your container, you gotta decide on a bedding. Um, so what I have used is pine flakes. Make sure you get the coarse flakes. You don't want to get um, fine pine shavings because it's too dusty and it's not really good for the uh, chick's respiration. So you want to get coarse pine shavings or you can also use um, like chopped straw. You can even use newspaper. Um, so if if you choose to use newspaper, paper though, it will absorb. You'll have to change it out very frequently. So what I'm doing is kind of like a deep litter method in a chicken coop. I'm using these coarse pine shavings and as the chicks grow out over the next few weeks, I'll just keep piling more shavings on top um, and then take it all out to the compost here in a few weeks. So you do want to keep their bedding fairly clean. Um, you can do little spot cleanings and then also just pile more um, of the bedding on top to, to allow that to kind of prevent them from picking up and pecking at their own poop because uh, you don't want them eating that. They can, get, uh, they can get diseases from that. Now, you can use about anything for a feeder. Um, you can use a, a bowl or a plate or whatever, um, but if you use something that is open on top, they will get in there and scratch and they will put feed everywhere, basically. They'll just be eating off the ground all the time. Now, what I like to use, excuse me, excuse me, sweetie pie. Um, I, I like to use these with the holes because they stick their heads through and it kind of keeps the, um, chickens from making a big mess. Now, the third thing you'll need, fourth thing, I guess, containers, uh, bedding, feeder. You'll also need water. What I like to do for water is have it elevated just a little bit. Um, so I have that on some wood blocks, but this is a gallon watering container. I've had these chicks for a week. Most people suggest getting a pint or a quart sized um, water uh, water for the chicks at first but honestly I just got the gallon size straight away and just didn't fill it very much 
and that way I was making sure to um, refill it every day so it had fresh, clean water. Now, something also that I do in the water is I add just a splash of apple cider vinegar um, with the mother, like, uh, you know, on raw, real apple cider vinegar. Um, that adds a, a little bit of a probiotic um, boost to their, uh, to their gut. Gives them some good healthy bacteria, and then also, I don't know. I just think it's good for them. I've read that several places. So now the the last thing that you'll definitely want to do is have a heat source. So the way I have mine, um, I just have a, a red lamp, and uh, as you can see, most of them are kind of underneath it. I just moved them out to this, and this is a much bigger space, so um, I've got it pretty close to the ground because I wanna make sure that they don't get too cool in this bigger space. Um, but uh, the chicks will tell you if it's too hot or too cold. I've actually got some footage um, here where they are too hot. So they're all gathered around the outside of the of the heat spot. And then I moved it up and you can check it back after about an hour and look again and see where they're at. Um, and, and they'll, like I said, they'll let you know. If they're too cold, they will be bundled up together and they will be really loud. Um, and and they'll just kind of pile up on it, on top of each other right underneath the heat lamp. Um, each week you can raise your heat uh, source just a little further away. Over a period of four to six weeks, you want to gradually decrease the temperature from 90 degrees the first week to around 70 degrees. By, by that time they should be fine at um, regular room temperature. Now. Um, thinking of heat sources, now since we're on the topic, uh, as you can imagine, there is a little bit of a danger here with fire hazards. Um, this lamp is extremely hot, and if it were to fall onto the super dry pine shavings, it could very likely start a fire. Now, if uh, I'll show you what I do. Whatever you do, you just want to make sure that it's clamped on and it's secure. Um, I've had these things fall off just from being clamped. So, so here's what I do. When I clamp it, I actually put a screw through the clamp and it goes through both sides. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. But yeah, so I put a screw through so that the clamp can't actually pull off of that board. Um, it might could tilt a little bit, but it's not gonna pull off of that board. And uh, it's gonna stay right where I put it. Now, when I get ready to raise it, I'll put another screw in. Uh, so that's just a scrap piece of lumber. And, and when I'm done with this, it's, it can just go in the fire pile. Heating and lighting are kind of the same thing if you're using a heat light, um, heat lamp. Um, but if you're using, if you're not using the infrared, you can stress them out too much. Um, if if they have too much light, they can get a little aggressive. They can start pecking each other, and they don't they don't sleep they don't seem to sleep as well. Um, either the first day i don't know what i was thinking i just picked up the wrong light i picked up a regular light heat light and um i switched to this infrared the second day and they slept so much better um they were asleep half the time actually uh, with the infrared light but the other one they were up and moving and agitated and they were they were chasing each other around and um they seem to like the infrared a lot better. They were, they're a lot more calm. Um,
But yeah, it was a lot of work getting them in here because I didn't really have the place cleared out yet, but I'm happy that I have them out of my living room and in a more permanent place until we get the coop set up over the next few weeks. We should be doing a video over the next week or two of us building a coop because they are gonna outgrow this space in just a few weeks. So uh, follow and subscribe if you want to see how we end up building a, a mobile coop. I got a uh, little small trailer that we're gonna build it on the back of. So I think that'll be kind of an interesting project. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out our channel. Um, until next time, keep growing.